I was waiting for the clock to start. Oh. Oh, no, I unplugged it by accident. God dang it, So Raul. it's in the ceiling. Yeah. yeah. Didn't your clock used to be bigger? Your clock looks smaller than usual, Raul. It's cold in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> Raul's internal clock is, uh, is, is going off. Uh, look, hey, everybody, we're back grabbing the brisket, too. We are a couple of guys uh, down. Um, I don't know. It seems like every week. It's just every week. Uh, we cannot get everybody to show up. We can't. And, and, uh, and maybe that's a good thing. I mean, if we get everybody in here, I mean, yeah. the, just the personalities and everybody's heads, it'd just be throughout the roof. We'd be good. Yeah. We probably we wouldn't even be started right now. We'd be like just still bullshit. waiting for Jan. Waiting for Jan. Yeah. Jan, we, if everybody knows, hey, we get here and Jan's like, you know, let me, um, I, can we change the camera angles? And all the lighting. Can we all get new lightings. bulbs in here tonight? Yes. Yeah, he's got a ladder Every up here night. just like loosening stuff up. And then he's like, you know, he's like, uh, let me, okay, well, let me see. And he's like, okay, well, he's got to get up and go around and look at the monitor. Hey, sit let in my me, spot. Sit in my spot sit for in my me. spot. Yeah. I mean, it's, he's a perfectionist. And, you know, I, I do uh, commend him and uh, we appreciate them. Uh, we, we definitely uh, uh, <laughs> need it on this show. You know what I mean? Yeah, but not tonight. I think we've got this under control. Uh, we have a great interview coming up here mm-hmm. pretty quick. Michelle and Brandon Oguin. Oguin or Oguin? Oguin? I don't know. I don't know. We're going right. to find out. We're going to find get, that out. We have bets going. Yeah. Um. So it, it is always amazing to me um, when you post something, social media, when you think it's going to kill. Mm-hmm. And, and you know it's going to kill, but there's just that that just slight little moment of like, shit, what nobody what likes it you know what i mean you're like but then you always got those freaking assholes oh, there's that always just one. like oh you wrapped it in tinfoil yeah like oh my god yeah you're a serial killer like that's you know there's no foil made out of tin anymore right right 100 percent. i do i mean but like who wants to say uh aluminum foil all mm. the time but we, we posted that brisket uh, we'll, we'll get into the little cook a uh, little bit uh in a minute or two but uh dude how's your week been I've been working, man. Like, I don't know what the deal is. My wife's been making me actually go to work. It's mm. been ridiculous. Unfair. That's sad. Yeah, it is. It really is. My yeah. best life is over, I guess. Yeah, I don't did know. you do any cool stuff? Uh, you mean while I was working? Yeah. No, no. I put out another newsletter for us. If you guys aren't subscribed to the newsletter, go do that. Uh, you can reach out to us, info at grabbingabrisket.com. We'll get you hooked up. Um, that just went out. We talked about our, uh, our uh, trip out there to Houston. Okay. That was fun, so... Uh, and there's a video for that too. So, our buddy Raul will be put that together. So, if y'all haven't seen that, go see it. Yeah, I saw I saw two things interesting this week. One of them was um, one of them is an off color story, um, it, meaning it's not related to barbecue, and the other one is related to barbecue. And I'll, I'll get into one which I, I thought was kind of interesting. Um, it, you had a mother daughter duo um, entrepreneur that mm-hmm. which is traveling across the country like they found a i guess a a a need um they found a a service that people were needing and uh so they provided that said service they they started out in california Mm -hmm. and uh and i guess maybe they got in a little bit of trouble over in california and they're like you know what hey we're we're just going to take our business across country uh and we're going to head to texas Mm -hmm. and then uh and and they did and you know they they were just uh, they got arrested what were they doing, James? They, they gonna, did. You know, going to beat around this bush? You're I'm, gonna I'm, tell I was us trying to beat around just a little bit just to draw out the dramatics of this. Uh, but, yeah, here locally, uh, Cyprus, uh, they, they had a mother-daughter duo that was traveling across the country in an RV mm-hmm. that they were giving, um, I guess it, you would call them BBLs, in their van. BBLs? Yeah. Like Brazilian butt lifts? Correct. In, the, in a van? In a van. That doesn't Down seem by safe. The river. Does not seem safe. This at seems all. legit. Yeah. No. Uh, you can Google <laughs> it. They, they, they got they got arrested on it. Uh, a. The mother is sixty or fifty eight. B. The daughter is eighteen. And I was like, man, shit, that's a, that's a pretty big uh, age gap there. <laughs> you know what I mean, I'm like, holy shit. Uh, also, they were charging six grand a pop. You know, it's actually not a bad deal for a BBL. That that's what people were probably doing out there because they had paid customers just lined up to to get their service, and then they were also like, um, I guess they they put an undercover cop, uh, a little sting or whatever, uh-huh. and they're like, here, 
take some Xanax. This will just knock off the uh, edge, uh, so you're so not so nervous or whatever. But uh, so I assume she's an actual it's like surgeon, maybe. I or? don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. So how does that work? If it's in a van, the, the daughter I assume is working reception. She's like just sit in our waiting area, which right. is like a lawn chair out front. Look, or honestly, nobody has time to go to the doctor anymore, right? right. You want we'll the doctor come to, to you. come to you. <laughs> Just like right to your uh, freaking driveway. Let's oh my go. God. This is a whole different different thing. Like whatever. You want to get a BBL. You want to get plastic surgery. Go ahead. But All they, for it. Some yeah. of them are crazy. So we, this is re- related uh, to your off color, whatever you called it. Yeah. Um, I, we fly in and out of Miami from, with my work. Uh, fly to 10. There's a lot of people that go to Miami just to get their butt lifts. Like that's, that's it's like a thing. You you know it's there and you can see them. When we're walking up to the gate, when we're going to to fly out of Miami, go back to wherever it is we're going next, you can see them because everybody's sitting in the gate area except for them. They're just standing there. They got the compression <laughs> socks on and they're standing there. Oh, shit. I was about to say, are they like just cocked to one no, side? Just not like, yet. Not yet. Yeah. They're just standing. They won't sit because once you sit, you like. Hemorrhoid pillows <laughs> or something. <laughs> they have those too, yeah. <laughs> but once they get on a the plane, they still don't want to sit. Oh, and it's time to go. Yeah. And they're standing. And we're like, you have to sit down. And you know what they do? They hand you a doctor's note. Like, oh, my doctor said I don't have to sit. Like, oh, wow. I'm like, well, the FAA says that you have to sit your ass down or you're going to get off the plane. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then, you know, they'll, they'll do it. Eventually, they'll sit down on their donut or whatever. But as soon as that seatbelt sign comes off or as soon as we get up in there. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. Yeah. They're up or they're turned around and they're kneeling in front of their seat like it's prayer time or something. It's just crazy. <laughs> like. And there's so many of them. So I just pulled up the two pictures of the mother and daughter. You have to show Yikes. The, you have to show. Can, I, I, we, can I will, we show the article? Or? I, I will show it. Okay. But yes. <laughs> and you know what cracks me up is that the Houston Police Officers Union made a comment on their post and was like, hopefully law enforcement is seizing their assets. <laughs> I get it. Uh, the dad jokes <laughs> coming Assets. out. Yes, I get it. That's good. Uh, they, they also uh, they also talked about uh, in the, in a related article talking about because I guess here in the Houston area there was also another instance where a lady had received a um, uh, a boob lift hmm. at her um, dentist's office. Oh no, kidding! Yeah, so you could just you know get that cavity filled and also get a little uh, Novocaine. Let me let me pump them suckers up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all for getting deals, uh, two for one type uh, stuff, but that seems a little extreme. I think they just put like balloons in there and then use a little air blower thing. <laughs> just, okay. Yeah. <laughs> probably good. <laughs> That's probably enough of that. <laughs> I feel like Jan is here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. We are getting pretty stupid. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that that was pretty interesting. But uh, one thing that did catch my eye, and it I mean, this sounds very just fake, um, very. Um, grifter like type, mm. but this is an actual real thing that's going on in China. Um, they're they're selling grilled ice, grilled ice, grilled ice. So yeah, the New York Post uh, posted a video, and for people out there, they, we're not going to show you the video, but uh, you can see kind of a little uh, screenshot of the um, the picture. Oh, yeah. They're She's putting using ice over a uh, a chopsticks. charcoal grill, mm-hmm. and he brushes it with like oil. And then he, he goes in and throws some type of sauce on it with some chili flakes and and uh, uh, maybe some other seasonings or whatever. And then boom, straight into the straight into the uh, little cup or the little uh, <laughs> the bowl there. But the funny thing is when you watch the video, the the lady uh, it's translated and, and she's like, "Should I eat it hot or cold?" <laughs> <laughs> she's and he's like, "Yeah, using eat it. chopsticks right. on eat her it ice hot. cubes." And so, yeah, she was like, oh, okay, eat it hot. And it then, can't be hot. What do you mean? How can it be hot? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he's like cooking. Oh, the, the fire keeps going out. It's yeah. melting. Like, but what, I mean, what the hell? It, what a hell of a salesman. I mean, right? It's like you could sell frozen right. water Literally to anybody. He's like, yeah, the guy next to him, he's got like marinated meat and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's like nice lavachi. He's like all this like stuff. Looking and he's over. like, homie over here is just selling grilled ice. Like, and he reaches in and just scoops in a, just a, a scoop of ice and just like puts it on the grill. Oh, wait. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. He's getting paid. Yeah, what do they What do they charge for a grilled ice? Do you know? No, oh, I don't know. Okay, it's got to be more than a, just a cup of water, right? <laughs> I would assume there's a lot of work <laughs> going into this. Where's that water coming from? That's a good question. Mm. All right, grilled ice. Grilled Love ice. it. Maybe we'll uh, Maybe we'll try that. Yeah, we should. We should definitely make some grilled ice. Um, two dollars. Two dollars. <laughs> okay. I mean, we sell. 
we sell flavored ice. We sell seasoned ice, but when we call seasons, it's like usually like cherry flavored. Yeah, and snow cones. Snow cones. Right. <laughs> we don't grill them. I do like those. Ooh, maybe we should grill some snow cones. <laughs> Somebody's gonna make a billion dollars idea right there. Let's go. So stupid. That's dumb. All right, we're moving on. I'm sorry, we're carrying. On. Uh, so we I cooked an Easter brisket um, mm. this past weekend. <clears throat> Killer money. I mean, like for me. I thought it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jan thought it was is is was great as well. Um, I've been eating on it all week. Um, just uh, just brisket and eggs, and then just uh, brisket for lunch, and then and brisket for dinner and stuff like that. But uh, it, for me, it was good because I didn't get tired of it. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It was super tender, super juicy. Um, so, and I post a, a picture, and I know Raul's gonna um, pull up a um, yeah, it's a little little mm-hmm. shot of the That's sexy juiciness. Mm-hmm. I like it. So, and it, you know, I, we, we posted it online socially, just like, hey, this is, ooh. Sorry. No, no, you're good. We can talk about Senator John Cornyn's uh, brisket. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people, a lot of people had issues with, because uh, there was a video that we posted prior talking about the 4-4 method that we discussed mm-hmm. a couple of episodes ago to where we're talking about just beginners and people that are just really trying to, to get into cooking brisket and just dial it in. This is an easy method just to produce a nice solid brisket. And if you do it right, you can still develop a pretty good bark. Mm-hmm. And and it's tender and juicy. So when we put that that video out, everybody just lost their freaking mind. They're like, no, uh uh-uh. uh. I, I never use paper or you know, even our friends out there that are just busting our balls oh, about for that. Sure. It's like, I never use paper or why tin foil or why aluminum foil? Like, what are you doing? Like you know, uh, I, I mean, I get it. I understand all the, uh, the 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 questions or whatever, but there were legit questions where people were like, "Okay, well, I I'm intrigued. I want to I want to learn more. I want you know, what was a time temp, um, how long type deal that people were asking, and and how do you wrap the brisket? Do you wrap the brisket? Is do you leave, one guy was like, do you is do you leave air in between? Like, do you like mm-hmm. tint it because right. I don't want the the foil to touch the seasoning and then it, and it's gonna like Pull it off. Pull off the if seasoning. If it's set right, it shouldn't. It, it shouldn't, but right. you do do not want to leave like an air pocket. You want everything so tightly close um, to that brisket that it really can't breathe. Because if you create any type of like bubble, you're going to produce steam, and you're going to get water vapors, and it's going to drop down, and it's going to make your seasoning kind of dissipate, yeah. or it's going to rehydrate your seasonings up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's exactly right. Uh, yeah, that brisket looked absolutely amazing. Do you want to take a look at the video? Yeah, let's show a little shot of it. There we go. Okay, okay, look at that. Oh, that is juicy, look, perfect yeah. smoke ring, perfect bark. I might do a brisket professor video on this. Yeah, check out that bark. That bark was done using tin foil. I'm just saying. Yeah, that looks perfect. Yeah, you don't have to use peach paper. Yeah, that's a solid... A minus, bro. Thank you, man. Brisk professor <laughs> in the plus. house. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Uh, we did actually get a question about, uh, I think it's actually from your 404 method. Okay. Uh, if you want to hear it. Let's do it. This is from our buddy Greg, Greg 1492. Uh, just out of curiosity, why rush the cook? In my experiences, I obtained a better bark and smoke ring at a lower, like 225 temperature. Um, I won't start the foil versus paper argument, LOL. I'm not saying anything against this method's outcome. I've not seen or tasted it. Also, to each their own. So I guess his question is, why rush the cook? He feels like when you're doing 404, you're just, or when you're running at that temperature, you're you're speeding up the cook. Right. Well, I guess it goes twofold. Like um, sometimes you just don't have enough time in the day to do, devote 16 hours to to smoke a brisket. Now there may be some people out there that that have a pellet smoker or some type of electric smoker type deal where they can just wake up in the morning or in the evening, just, just put it on, dial it in and just let it cook, which is nothing, no, no shade towards that. Then nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I do it all the time. But there are people that are, that all they have is an offset smoker. So sitting there manning a fire for 16 hours can be very daunting. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just a way to kind of not really cheat the system, but you, you could still cook it long enough to where you develop a good bark and a good flavor and we talked about this multiple times on the show to where 
um, the, the meat is only going to accept so much smoke. Yeah, once it hits, I think, 140 or 145, it's not going to get anything else. Correct, yeah, and, and that's science. I, I don't make the science up. I mean, the science comes from the scientists, science, uh, science, science. The, the meat scientists. I don't think we've really actually come up with a terminology for a meat scientist. I don't think it should be meat scientists, but... Mm-hmm. Maybe it's a we my, did. It's it's a meteorologist. Meteorologist, yeah. yes. I was going to say a, a myoglobin expert or some type of, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I, I don't know. We'll come up with something, but hopefully that kind of answered your question a little bit. It's like, look, I enjoy sitting out there for sixteen hours just knocking back a couple mm-hmm. of tall boys and 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 doing that. But uh, I mean, man, life happens, right? Right. And sixteen hours—that's a long time. Even if you're starting at three o'clock in the morning, you're still not going to be done until seven o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless you're starting it the night before and you're going to sit there the whole time, that's a lot. And this, and that recipe, I think I, I haven't done this before, but I think on a drum, that's probably a perfect recipe too. Cause those things for the most part, they usually want to sit right around 275. 300, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, for sure. Perfect. Dude, can you imagine sitting there just devote 16 hours to cook this brisket? Then you got to let it rest, right? Yeah. Um, and then you let it rest, and then, then you pull it out, and you start cutting into it, and that motherfucker's dry as shit. <laughs> you know, you just devoted, like, 24 hours of your life it's that you'll never get day. back. Yeah, and, 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 again, no shade to, to doing that, because I, I do it. I've done it plenty of times, but there's just certain instances where uh, it can I just shorten it up a bit? Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, that's, that's how I kind of learned in the very beginning to how to how to cook brisket. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's a foolproof, and, and it says in the video, it's a foolproof method on how to cook video because people still do struggle trying to get that tenderness, mm-hmm. you know? That's the key to do. Like yeah. That's the most important part. And so. it's dry. You know what I mean? So it's like, hey, why don't you tackle this first? And then after that, move on to, you know. Right. Then you can play with it. You can mess with it a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. I will say when we cook on uh, uh, Johnny, especially when we fill that sucker up and put a bunch of briskets on there, you don't have any choice but, but to cook for 12 hours. That mm-hmm. thing just... It just hums along at like 250, 225. But I mean, get, get, it's part of what we always say is you got to know your pit and know how your pit wants to run. So yeah. you know, just try it. Don't knock it until you try it. So Love it. That's what I got. Words of wisdom. Let's yeah. go. Oh, that was uh, our buddy Greg. So, Thank you, Greg. Uh, Greg, you're going to be our winner. Our winner this week, you're going to win some. Suckle busters, suckle busters. Everybody wants some suckle busters. I like it. Did I sound like Jan? You sounded better. Oh, damn. Oh, sorry, Jan. He's fired. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get somebody to take that clip and Jan's clip, and then we're going to have it harmonized and mm, like put that. some beats behind it. And then now we have our Boys intro. Ten. Little auto tune. Definitely a lot. <laughs> lot of lot of tune on it. Uh, let's go. All the all the auto tone. Right. Lot of, what's it called? Auto tune? Auto tune. Yeah. Auto tune. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, a bunch of that stuff. Um, I was gonna say something else, and it's gone. I don't know where it went. Oh, if you have a if you have a question for us, you want to send in, uh, or if you have barbecue win or barbecue fail, and you want to win some suckle buster seasoning like our boy Greg just did, uh, hit us up. It's four three four eight two nine two two nine nine, and that's just a voicemail line. It'll be a beep. Well, there'll be a message. Then there'll be a beep. Then you leave your message, and we're gonna share it. Or you can email yeah. us or, or message us online like Greg did at any of our social medias. So. I love Reach it. out. Yeah. Hit us up on our pager too. We got that, still got that pager going. So <laughs> I know we're old as fuck over here. So, but uh, hey, it's Grabbing the Brisket podcast. I mean, this is a, uh, it's a day that we look forward to every week. Uh, get to share a couple of beers. We get to talk a little war stories as far as the barbecue go. And then we get to interview badass people like Michelle and Brandon come up here in a few minutes. Absolutely. Do you want to dive into some barbecue news real quick or do you want to drink some beers? Let's do both. Okay. All right. Well, first we'll do this barbecue news real quick. And this is uh, this is some um, some rerun action because we've been talking about this stuff for a couple of weeks now. But the Sauces of Honor competition, if you're making barbecue sauces at the house that you think are the best on the planet, or if you have a company where you're mass producing or whatever it is, if you've got some barbecue mm-hmm. sauce you think is the best, send it in, enter this competition, be a winner. There's going to be a link down below. Uh, this is our buddy Kel Phelps over there with the barbecue news Magazine and the MBBQA. We didn't even do our katsis. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sorry. This is hot off the grill barbecue news. There it is. Wow. It is. Am, I, am I rusty? Am I a little rusty? You, you forgot man? the intro, man. Sorry, you, man. Just, you just oh. went right into yeah, it. I really just dove in head first. Yeah, just prematured it. Sorry. Got, got excited, I guess. <laughs> uh, the next thing is uh, when you're hearing this, it's coming up in like a couple days. The Houston Barbecue Festival. Um, this is April 14th. 
it's in Houston. All the information's down below again. Um, it's at the, where is it at? Um, oh, Humble Civic Center Arena. So it's right here, right outside of Houston, I guess. Uh, we're going to be out there Sunday. It goes from 1 to 4. Correct. Is that right? Uh, and we're going to be out there having a good time eating barbecue from all the best restaurants around Houston and the greater Houston area. So come see us. Yeah. Now, I know they were offering VIP packages as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know tickets are limited. Yeah. So hopefully by the time that this is reaching your ear holes. Right. There's um, still some available. There's some available. Right. And then you can jump in and get it. Buy them online before you go. Because I'm pretty sure if you try Don't to get them up. at the door, there you won't be able to. Right. Yeah. So get them ahead of time. That's all I got for the Hot Off the Grill Barbecue News. There it is. There it is. There it is. Found it. That's great. Yeah. All right. Uh, do you want to? Uh, and I feel like we're just like burning through this right now, but we can we can try a new beer if you want. Do you want to do? Let's uh, go into the grabbing the brisket. Beer review. So I feel like it gets weird when there's just two of us here. I don't because know. I thought it was sultry. When there's like 20 of us here, everybody tries to go into their baritones. Like, <laughs> brr, brr, brr. You're like, fuck, guys, you normally don't have that voice. Why are you going deep like that? Just go oh, normal. I see. That's James's yeah. thing. Right. That's Let my thing. James That's do my that. thing. I need, I'm going to need you to stay in this range. I'm going to be down here, up, you know, boys and men. Let's go. <laughs> they all didn't have the same voice, right? Uh, so let, let me get into what we got. I feel, I feel like I'm supposed to have like the uh, the Kermit the Frog voice. Every time I hear myself on the podcast, I'm like, God, I sound weird. Hey, we can make it happen. <laughs> this is where you're supposed to say, no, you don't, John. Oh, you sound oh, great. oh, no, you don't, bro. <laughs> my, God bless America. My apologies. What's going on in that ice chest over there? He's like really digging into it. I have been looking forward to this beer for almost an hour now. Quite some time. So this was top shelf, John. This is literally top shelf at HUB. Did you have to get help to reach it? or It wasn't that high, John. <laughs> Shit. Uh, so this is this is a beer that when I first started getting into drinking non-light beer. Um, craft got, beer? Yeah. And when I got into drinking uh, type craft, craft beer, they, they always had in the giant bottles. Um, and you can get them at pretty much all the, the grocery stores or whatever. And it was this Trappist Ale. And it, it's Chimay, uh Trappist Ale. So it's a, this is a Trappist Triple Ale. I don't know. I've never okay. heard of them. I know, I know when I was partaking in some of those things, like they each had a, a, a specific color label. And it kind of, I guess, signified what it was, what type of ale it was. Mm. And then there was a white label um, that you could only get in like maybe a, a several mile radius of where the, um, the, the brewery. beer is brewed by the monks. So mm. I never had the white label. <clears throat> I know this is a white can. Is it not? It's it, not the white label. I don't think so. Okay. No, no. Uh-uh. Okay. It says product of Belgium, uh, and it says can conditioned, which I don't know what that means, um, but it sounds like something. Eight percent alcohol by volume. Yeah. yeah. It, it also says store in a uh, cool place, and it also says serve at uh, forty-two degrees to forty-eight degrees or forty-six degrees. That's some fine ass print there. Yeah, it's hard to read. Uh, did I fuck it up by just putting it in the cooler? Now it's like 32 degrees. No, I like it cold. Okay. Middleton, MA, US. Is MA Massachusetts or is it Maine? I, I think it's Massachusetts. I'm looking on the website. Nothing looks like it's in English. Hmm. Where, where's it? Um, Belgium. Okay. I either, my, my dyslexia is really kicking in, I guess, or because this doesn't even look like, oh, I have it on the wrong language. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, that that Middleton, Massachusetts, or whatever it is, is that's who's importing it. Correct. It's brewed in Camden, uh, S A something in the Belgium. Yeah, mm, there it oh, is. Be- Belou, Belgium. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna make a joke about there being monks in Massachusetts. But I don't know what it means by can conditioned. That's what I said. I don't, I don't get it. And when you said Chimay earlier, I thought you meant Chamoy, and you were just pronouncing it weird. Right. No. Uh, but I think this is gonna be different than that. It's always hard to smell out of a can. Smells like beer. <laughs> You're so stupid. God dang it. There's only two of us. We have to kind of hold it together. All right, let's do it. Mm. 
Okay. It kind of smelled like Heineken to me, which was not something I was liking, mm-hmm. but it tastes good. I tastes like good. It. Yeah, it tastes good. It's uh, a little malty. Mm-hmm. Um, sweetness, but not like a sugary sweetness, like a bready sweetness. Does that make any sense at all? No. No. Okay. Perfect. Like yeasty? Yeah. May- well, no. <laughs> I don't want to say <laughs> yeasty. The yeasty boys, let's go. <laughs> Uh, no, it's good. This is good. I don't know. It's a cool looking can too. I don't know. Uh, let me try to do my best, uh, Jan impression here. The can, uh, yeah, well it is. I mean, it's got, it's kind of mm-hmm. off, kinda mm-hmm. off white. Like maybe this is like eggshell. Right. Like I'm going to paint my kitchen. Oh, it's not white. Really it's eggshell. It. Everything just looks the same. Uh, oh, the gold. It should have been a different color. Um, can's fine. Taste, however. Mm, hold on. One more taste. Uh, no, this is good. I like this a lot. It, I mean, 8% ABV. I mean, that's nothing to... That's nothing to uh, sneeze at. Yeah, yeah, I like it. And it's smooth. It doesn't taste like Mm-mm. it's an eight percenter. You can, you almost think like when you know it's an eight percent, you almost think you're gonna taste that little bite at the end, but it's really not there. It's really smooth. Um, I would jump in there and score this thing. It's smooth. It's tasty. It's got a, a shit ton of flavor. Uh, I'll go. Uh, I'm gonna go eight point four. This is really good. I like this a lot. I would drink it again. How, how much was the six pack? If you don't mind my asking. Uh, I think it was roughly around seventeen bucks. Same that that, and it wasn't a six pack; it was a four four pack. Oh, that stings! This is yeah. a special occasion beer. Yeah, it's imported, so oh, it seems important. I feel like you, you could definitely like wear a blazer. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The patches Maybe, on the elbows, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Turtleneck yeah. it, just a blazer mm-hmm. and turtleneck. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sitting by a fire. Yeah. Let's go. You should be teaching history mm-hmm. in some university or something. Yeah. No, it's good. I think you've done a good job on this one. I like it. I mean, the the, the flavor is really good. It's not um, it's not bitter or anything like that. The alcohol content is a um, is a bonus. Mm-hmm. It's smooth, multi type. You know what you said earlier. I'm I'm going eight point five. I mean, I like it. Yeah. So you like it like just a little bit more than I like it. A little bit. Yeah. This okay. is something I, I definitely will buy again. Okay. Well, if you buy it again, 100%. I'll drink it again. Okay. Oh, perfect. Right. But I'm gonna have to charge you. <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about five dollars a can. Yeah, that's so. about what it is. So, right. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that's what we got for the grabman and the brisket uh, beer review. All right. Well, let's uh, let's get ready to bring in our guests here, uh, Michelle and Brandon, coming up real quick. You know, smoking meats isn't just cooking; it's an art form. The aroma, those deep flavors, the patience—it's a whole experience. And behind every great artist, there's the right set of tools. If you're aiming to build your own barbecue pit or dreaming of a custom design tailored just for you, SmokerBuilder.com has your back. Led by Frank Cox, their expertise is unmatched. Offering blueprints, kits, and insights, they turn every barbecue dream into a flavorful reality. Imagine your backyard, the center of attention, and at the heart of it, a smoker that's uniquely yours. It's more than just equipment. It's about crafting those unforgettable moments And with the guidance of Frank and his team, you're setting the stage for magic. So whether you're a seasoned pit master or taking your first steps into the smoky world, head over to smokerbuilder.com, fill up your carts, and be sure to use the promo code GRABTHEBRISKET in all caps to receive your 10% discount. Smoke on. Threw down some ribs last night, used the Chicks That Smoke Spicy Rub. Mind blown. Dude, that's what I'm saying. Like the Chicks That Smoke Spicy Barbecue All-Purpose Rub. Dude, it, it is a game changer for sure. Yeah, if you folks have not given it a shot, you need to. Honestly, your barbecue will thank you. Checks the smoke. It's at sucklebusters.com. You know, whether it's a casual backyard grilling session or high-pressure world barbecue competition, one thing's certain. The drink by your side needs to be ice cold. Absolutely, and that's where Yeti coolers come in. Every time I'm grilling in my backyard, I trust Yeti to keep things cold. And in the midst of barbecue competitions, with all that heat and intensity, Yeti's a game changer, ensuring those drinks stay chilled. So whether you're perfecting the burger flip or aiming for barbecue gold, Yeti's got your back. Here's to cooler moments, no matter where you grill. Cheers. Hey, I'm Pants Aaron. This is Stevie. And I'm Augie. And we are BFYTW, a podcast all about playing games and having fun. Our games are usually based on British panel shows and game shows, but we'll play anything that captures our attention and imagination. Why? It's right there in the title. You'll never guess what the F stands for.
All right, John, before you get into it, do you want to... Oh, um, uh, <laughs> Are you messing with me? No, no, I'm not messing with you. Uh, do you want to clarify? Uh, okay, so we got kind of a, uh, not a running bet or whatever, but we're the, mm. the uh, pronunciation of your last name. Uh, <laughs> I married it. I'm not voting. No, come yeah. on. Let's hear it. I, I got to hear you butcher it first. No, I, I said... I got, oh, okay, go. I said Oguin. I, I was thinking Oguin. Boom. <laughs> you nailed it. I did? Perfect. Thank you. Oh, oh Gwen. Perfect. Oh, <laughs> damn it. Trust me, I've heard so much. That's one of my favorite things when the telemarketers call. If they can't pronounce it, you don't get a shot with me. It's <laughs> I love it. Perfect. I'm going to say it wrong, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. It's all good. Man. Okay. Uh, thanks. Okay. All right. We've been uh, we've been teasing this interview all night. Uh, and here they are, Michelle and Brandon Ogwin, uh, Ain't It the Life Barbecue competition team. Uh, these guys are world wing champions. Both have been uh, top ten in the top five in the world food championships. Mm -hmm. uh, multiple SCA and ancillary wins. Thirty plus top team barbecue competition top tens, and uh, they are the judging uh, chair and the reps for the Memphis in May, which I know we're going to dig into tonight. On top of all that, they got a kiddo that uh, got second at the Royal last year, and with a with a breakfast burger, and he's in the future of Q Magazine. So That's this right. whole family's just out there. That's freaking awesome. Kicking barbecue yeah. ass. Yeah. Hey, welcome in. Man. How's everything going for you guys tonight? Oh, good. We just finished up some prep for uh, the Atoka Barbecue Contest tomorrow up here in Atoka, Tennessee. Um, it's an NBN contest. We're doing pulled pork, ribs, beef. A uh, friend of ours is doing bacon. And then my son is doing a kid's dessert. Man, y'all are busy. That sounds like a full day. Yeah. NBN, that's the Memphis Barbecue Network. We don't we don't hear a lot about that stuff down here. I'm going to be honest with you down here in Texas. Well, a lot of that doesn't, like, we don't hear much about y'all stuff either. A lot of that seems to me it's, it's really localized. And unless you know people in the region, you know, you meet them at different contests. Like, you know, we meet guys that, you know, stake, you know, that will they'll be from all over the place. But aside of that, we, like CBA, we don't, we don't get much news of that up this way or uh, aside of, you know, the local KCBS stuff, uh, you know, pretty much around here, all we get is MBN. And the only thing I've seen is the, the friends that we've met along the way between SEA and, and the, the Texas teams we've met at the Royal that we've all become friends with. That's how we pick up on what y'all are doing down there with the half chickens and the briskets and the ribs and stuff. Right, right. Well, y'all came down to the, the MBBQA down there in San Antonio and mm -hmm. kicked our asses at the, the state competition there. That was fun. That was fun for yeah, us. Yeah, I got first place in the anything tri-tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did the, uh, uh, what's it? The um, Beef Wellington? Yes. No, it was actually, it was a um, Gouda grits with a tri-tip and a white wine mushroom cream sauce. Oh, well, there it is. Okay, yeah. so uh, I'll be honest. Uh, we we rolled into that competition not really knowing what the hell to do, uh, and that was our first uh, SCA event. Correct. Yeah, yeah. SCA and in the uh, ancillary like tri tip. We've been cooking tri tip for years, but we only know how to cook tri tip one way, <laughs> right. and that's just serve it medium rare, uh, and, and to perfection. And then we got there, and we're like, oh, okay, we well, can't just serve it that way. You have to do something with you it. Have to do something with it. And we're like. Um, I don't understand. Like what, what, what's happening here? So, uh, we, we got, uh, things were kind of shaking up for us a little bit. So luckily there was a HEB like right around the corner. I don't know if you guys oh, yeah. are familiar with the HEBs, but oh, yeah. we're, like, okay, we're just going to roll in there, just start grabbing a bunch of stuff. And uh, we'll, we're going to try to figure out something. I think we did try tip tacos or whatever. Mm -hmm. They were yeah. good. I thought they were good. Yeah, 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 for sure. You picked a heck of a contest for your first one with that storm that rolled through there in the middle. Oh, that was crazy. Yeah, I was hold, I was holding on to one tent, one side of the tent, and then the lightning bolts are like striking like all across around us. I was like, uh, "Hopefully, this is not it, or where we just uh, the, the good Lord decides to take us out." But if it is, like, hey, I mean, we went out doing yeah. what we were, what we were love to do. So what a way to go! Exactly. RMG, your, your first trip to the World Food Championship. Oh yeah, the, yeah, about the same thing. I was holding on to the tent with one hand, and I had my steak in the other hand, trying to get it on the grill. It was like. Yeah what 30 40 mile an hour straight line winds just right when we had to turn in it, it was horrible that yeah, was my first first one to world food championship so yeah, yeah that was fun <laughs> yeah that's amazing it, it, it's always badass like um i say badass it, it's always nerve-wracking whatever but every competition that you do there's always something mm -hmm. it, there's yeah. always okay. something that maybe just goes wrong or just doesn't go your way or the weather comes in and plays a factor and, and and the the, the the people that that really have that process down and then can adapt and overcome on on those challenges that you see them all the time like yourselves 
uh, the people that are always in the uh, the the top of the podium, mm-hmm. winning those championships. They're the ones that know how to. Okay, I can I can adapt. I can change. I can adapt. We we had one competition. We were uh, I think it was uh, helping out firefighters, and uh, we we had already turned in uh, one of the the. No, we might have gone into awards or judging. No, twofold. <laughs> Uh, now, yeah, we had we had Bloody Mary competition uh, and it was just a monsoon and, and we ran out of uh, we didn't run out of but w- one of the gentlemen forgot to bring the um, the vodka. And so the only thing we had on hand uh, was from the night before of us drinking was fireball. And so oh. we we had fireball. So we used fireball as the alcohol for our Bloody Mary. Uh, so out of 100 and plus teams uh, doing Bloody Mary, we end up coming up with first place. Using fireball as the wow. alcohol of choice. Um, I thought you all celebrated good on that one. <laughs> we, we, we did. Uh, you were probably pissed there wasn't any fireball left. <laughs> exactly. And then later, later on, we started turning in some of our stuff. We went and turned in one category, and we come back, and it's like uh, a big storm just kicked up. And it, it, you look up in the sky, and there were just everybody's pop up tents were just like circling around tornado and it just dumped off like about a hundred yards down and i was like okay well i guess we got to get a new pop-up tent um but yeah it, there's always challenges that are overcome always yeah it never fails especially if you're in the south like we are mm-hmm. uh you never know what the weather's gonna do I, I, it's kind of like that when we were in texas last time too but uh it, it's always like that around here you're it's likely to be you know 70 degrees in the morning and then 30 at night the next morning it'll be 80 and raining sideways. You just never know. Mm-hmm. So you got to, we dress for all four seasons here. Yeah. In, <laughs> you, in a single day. In a single day. You just got to be ready for it. You know, <laughs> we're just glad it's almost summer. And then we just know it's hot. You just can't yeah. take off anymore after you reach a certain point. Right. right. <laughs> it doesn't help. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And that's, that's the key, right? You got to be able to overcome, be consistent, overcome whatever the, whatever the crap they're going to throw at you. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is our first time having you on. Uh, can we can we dive in a little bit? Like, how'd you get into this barbecue game? I know you guys have been doing this for a long time. I think uh, you said 2013 is when the team came together. So um, that's when we got together and created our team. Uh, I've been competing in barbecue, or I actually started as an organizer um, back in 2007. I was starting helping organizing some MBN uh, Memphis Barbecue Network events. Um, friends got me involved with that, and then I joined a barbecue team, uh, FNA Barbecue back in 2009 and uh, rode that train for a little bit with some friends and hanging out, being part of the team members, helping out with dishes or learning to, to how to do pork and how to do ribs and this, that, and the other. And then when Brandon and I met actually at Memphis in May uh, in 2013, I brought him into my new hobby habit is what I call it. And uh, he's been kind of hooked ever since and kind of taken the lead as our head cook. Um, and, and, <laughs> and, and it's done a really good job with it. You know, we've, we've learned a lot over the years and, and, and grown as a team and learning who, who's, who's got the strengths and the weaknesses and how to work with each other. Okay. So do you guys kind of each pick a category and you run with it or how does that work? Well, since now we have the nine-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we had tried that for a while. Uh, honestly, man, when we cook, everything's truly a team effort. We've got, uh, another guy that cooks with us, one or two that kind of pop in and out. Um, and, and really everything's just kind of a team effort. Most everything we've been working on for the last, you know, four or five years has really truly been us all getting in the kitchen, trying to develop the flavor profile that we want to run, you know, tweaking our tenderness, checking all that stuff, you know, too many practice cooks and and bad ribs and stuff to get to where we are now, you know, so uh, it it really is a team thing. So I learned when not to drink at Cook's. Yeah, we learned (laughs) when and what not to drink at Cook's, uh, uh, you know, more than once on that, I'll be honest. Uh Uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things we found working together. Uh, instead of saying, "Hey, you, you know, you do the pork and you do the ribs," we, we found it works better that way. Everybody knows what's going on. If one person is, doesn't happen to be there for an event, it's not a big deal for somebody else to step in and do that part. You know, yeah, we've, we've gotten really organized with our our recipes, our timelines, our schedules how things are trimmed, how things are prepped and all that good stuff. So between all the three of us that are on there, we like, we are very interchangeable. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, for the listeners, we'll just post those recipes and timelines down below Just scroll down. We're going to post. <laughs> yeah, they'll be way down there at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, way down. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's always like, uh, you mentioned the, the drinking. I mean, that's something that we, we and any probably new cook off team that that's out there that, that is really trying to take it off to the next level. 
Uh, and that's something that you probably need to um, you need to watch. You need to curve back and just at least wait until after after things have been turned in, and then you can start celebrating. Uh, because we we've we've sabotaged us ourselves so many times uh, doing competitions because yep. yeah maybe we did have a little too many fireballs the night before, or <laughs> yep. um, yeah. maybe you continued to 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 keep drinking you had that one person that's like hey i'm gonna stay up with a fire or hey i'm gonna get yeah. up and light the fire and, and they never do and uh that, that's something to be mindful that's um, happened before yeah that has that's what we cooked to like a one and a half two hour rib at a contest one time because of that same thing you <laughs> yeah know? first of the day we, we did but you know it's it, it, <laughs> you, you, you gotta you know what they say uh, improvise adapt overcome and, and that's no matter what right so you know barbecue is always a challenge yeah Sometimes exactly self-inflicted <laughs> yeah we, we we had a guy um uh doing uh one of our competition competitions the night before we all hung out we all drank we all had a great time at this little uh bar that we're at and uh so he goes home and he's like uh i'll be back and, and uh, m- m- keep in mind we probably shut it down at like two o'clock ish i'm gonna go home i'm gonna shower and i'm gonna come right back and then i'm gonna start doing whatever i'm like okay well okay and so the the next morning rolled around we're drinking coffee we got breakfast going we're starting fires we're doing our doing our thing and all of a sudden um all of a sudden he's not there and then 10 o'clock rolls around he's not there 11 o'clock rolls around he's not there and it's a, in the turn in for the brisket at that time was i think it was five o'clock he wasn't on your team though he was another team right? was not on our team he was on on another team he's it's his pit's sitting right next to us and uh and it's like i mean we're at a competition i mean i'd, I'd light your pit but i mean we're competing and so he shows no, up let it go you're the one no, guy i don't have we, to worry about we let right. it go and so he shows up like probably i'm gonna say around noon maybe maybe about one o'clock and the pit's not lit uh the the brisket's still in the cooler and he gets there and he, he loads his firebox up with so much wood so much just fire starter uh little bricks and he <laughs> ignites it just lights it up and he's got a roaring fire I mean, it's like 500 degrees 600 degrees and then uh it settles down a little bit but he's still cooking like about four or five six hundred five hundred degrees four hundred degrees and that that brisket went on and as soon as they hit that grade it was just like sizzling Shh. <laughs> he did his thing he cooked that brisket in probably four hours and in hindsight looking back on how people do um, briskets nowadays with uh, the smaller cuts and doing them on drum cookers and, and doing the hot and fast method. It, it was something that he kind of just stumbled upon. And so he, he, he cooked his brisket for like two to three hours, wrapped it. It was done in another hour and then it went into cooler. And uh, um, lo and behold, he came down with first place brisket and just kicked all our butts. And I was like, terrible asshole <laughs> yeah. yeah it happens i've seen it happen a lot <laughs> that's just that's just awful so how did y'all get uh involved with memphis in may uh i got involved uh it was probably about 2007 2008 with the same friends that got me into helping uh, organize other contests just like i was bored new to the city um say, come on, come do this with me. And I volunteered uh, as an ambassador, what they call contestant ambassadors, where you're like the liaison for the teams between the event and um, them. It's pretty much just the little helper between the event there, making sure they have the information they need and stuff like that. And I, I've been there ever since. Um, I think about halfway through there, probably about 2010 or nine, I actually went to the judging committee and started helping there in the judging tent and learning more about that process and how to oversee that. And that's how I there. And then you were. You know, I, I was actually employed for Memphis in May uh, 13. in thirteen as seasonal help. A friend of mine was the kind of the one who oversaw the barbecue and handled some of the music fest stuff and some of the stuff for vendors. And she hired a seasonal person every year. And I was uh, in between things at the time. And she said, "Hey, come work for me." I said, "Yeah, sure, no problem." Uh, so I worked for them. And then uh, the committee that she was on was having some real issues that year. I can't even remember what all. It but they were like people didn't show up people didn't show up and they said hey we need you to go down there and uh just make it happen and and we did and we pulled it off and i think i tended bar for three or four hours and hung signs and hauled whatever needed done. crap everywhere and this and that and the other and then we met and since then i i jumped straight over into the the uh, judging committee and 
been here ever since. Been there ever since. It took us a few years to, you know, we had a, a couple of people that were in it in front of us who were in charge and then they parted ways. They parted ways with them. And then I think we've been there, one 20. of us or both of us since 2016. 16. 16. Uh, have been the chair. Uh, we just kind of take turns now, and uh, we got another person that we kind of rotate with. Yeah. Um, but he's the face on the microphone. He does all the cooks meetings, the judge briefings, herds the cats. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the trailer with the auditors and sending all the reports for the admin stuff, you know, posting results, uh, sending all the reports and information to the staff so they can read the results on stage. Okay. Hmm. So a lot of our listeners are in. Uh, well, I would say probably 75% of them are in Texas and they know Memphis and maybe they don't know Memphis and May. I know it's a different animal, right? Because it's its own sanctioning body. It's its own. Yep. Can you guys explain kind of a little bit how it works, how it's different than some of the other, the yeah. other ones out there? Yeah. So uh, what sets us apart? It's a, it's a couple of things. First off, we use comparative scoring. Uh, that's a lot different than a lot of what you see in KCBS and um, or, the rest of or, or pretty much everything else. So what, what that means is that uh, if you were put on a table and a blind table, they're similar to KCBS, you know, it's five or six entries per table, something like that, right? The only difference is, is that you are scored against what's on that table and mm -hmm. only what's on that table. That's, that's what you're judged against that day. Um, and the judges at that table have to pick a winner. Uh, on their card and that's how they denote that's a 10 um and down from there and then down from there uh, and that's kind of how that component of it works so the blind component is just like you would see at any other contest you've ever been to you put your meat in a blind box we just don't allow garnish so it's meat only no foil mm -hmm. no nothing uh on our pork stuff uh for saturday and then Let's see. Uh, for, you know, ancillaries are totally different animal. We can get into that later. But, uh, then we do an on-site component to our judging as well. So, and that's to where uh, the judge actually comes to your team. Uh, we send three judges out one at a time. They come to your team. You get to give a 10 to 15 minute presentation. Uh, tell them about your team, how you got started how uh, you got your product from start to finish, what you cooked on. It's pretty much just your chance to tell your bullshit story about how your barbecue is the greatest in the world. Right. Um, <laughs> sure, and and that, that's it. I mean, and that's really what it is. Um, the three meats. Yeah. And uh, we do, uh, we have three categories there. We do whole hog, we do whole shoulders and ribs. Um, that's another thing that separates us from the other. You can only do one category at Memphis in May. Uh, so whichever one is your best, that's the one you pick to run with. Uh, We've had a lot of champs that have been whole hogs and shoulders, and we had a rib last year for the yep. first time in 20-something years. years. 21 years? 21 years. Yeah. Um, so, and that's, that has been, like I said, 21 years mm -hmm. before we had had, we had some guys come close. We had a guy win ribs three years in a row, but just never put yep. it over to get the grand. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, it's definitely interesting. Uh, oh. And. I was going to say, the way it operates, like I said, the, a portion of your scores comes from each of them, then we add those together. Um, and then rank them. And then we rank them, and then we take the top three teams from each, category. from each division, hog, shoulder, and rib, and then they all go against each other in the finals. So we send four judges around all at the same time to all nine teams, to all nine teams and then they have to rank those teams one through nine. Uh, and, and that final ranking right there between the four finals judges that averages out and shows us who our grand champion is. Okay. Uh, what's really crazy is that it's typically the four finals judges don't agree. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. um, we, it's very strange that when they do, uh, like I know last year, they definitely did not. Uh, and and it's, it's really interesting to see how they rank things and what they think about it. So it, it's definitely, that, that's probably what makes us much different than... <laughs> Any other contest you see? Okay, I've so seen it to where some have went in third, went in third overall in their category and come out as a GC. Yeah, it can happen. Because it's a, it, your scores are right, clean. So your GC score, the the final scores only count in the final round. They don't they don't add in the preliminary scores with it. So you definitely have a shot from going at the bottom of the barrel to coming up top if you try hard enough. Well, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Once you, once you're in it, once you're in the tournament, you're you're in it, right? Yeah, exactly. You get there. Yeah, all you got to be is in the top three, and you're there. What does that timetable look like? Because if you're if you're getting judged or whatever, and then if you make it to that top nine and you have to get judged again, what's the time from the first time to come around judge until the second time? And are these uh, guys are you just serving the same so, thing, or you have a so, backup? I think you're doing separate. 
No, usually we stack, like, for example, when we go to Toke, it's almost the same format that we're going to be doing this weekend. So if we were to make finals, like in pork, there's a, another round. So we stagger our pork and our ribs. So we'll always pick, you know, put your favorite ones in the front in the prelim. Because you, you got to get there. you got to get to the dance. Mm -hmm. And put your, you know, worst case, put your crappier ones in the finals. Because at least you're there, you know you're in the money. Okay. Yeah, as we say, we'll take third with a smile on our face. It's fine. Right. Especially, <laughs> especially if you ain't got it. But, you know, so that's kind of how that works. And, but the, the timeline typically, so at Memphis in May, our finals start around 2 o'clock. Um, and that's what the rest And that's with our first category, which turns in at like 10, 11, 11 o'clock, 1045 to 11 in the morning. So we have a couple so, hours. So you have to do your blind okay. box. That goes in from 1045 to 11. And then at 11 o'clock, you get your three – on-site judges, which minutes. which you get to keep for 15 minutes maximum. So that's 45 minutes you could be judging there. Then we have to get all those cards back from all the on-site judges, tabulate everything. That typically takes us about an hour, hour and a half for per ribs, category for ribs, for ribs which yeah. is our biggest one. Uh, and then we notify the teams. So we try to give them always about an hour. Minimum of an hour. A minimum hour's notice. Sometimes they get more. To where they know that they finaled. Um, we try to give them more. Give them time can. to set their booth up, make it look snazzy, get some extra glaze on that finals ribs, get them, you know, all that good stuff they want to get going and get ready. Okay. So what if, what if they're doing the whole hog? Are they doing more than one of these whole hogs? If they just in case. they yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mo most of our whole hog guys cook at least two. Um, okay. I've seen guys cook three, mm -hmm. uh, four even. Cause on that, when they're doing the blind box, they'll use one side of the hog to build a blind box. Then they'll turn it around and use that other side for on-site presentation. Oh, I guess. Yeah. And then they always like to, most of them, like to have a clean, untouched whole hog for finals. Huh. Dang, I, I think you got to have some sponsors in, in right. this uh, in this NBN. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not cheap. It, it, it's, not, it's not a cheap contest. But honestly, I mean, a couple of whole hogs ain't no more than a few Golgari briskets from Snake River or something. No kidding. I bought those. <laughs> They're not cheap. Yeah. 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 That's you true. know, a four a four meat contest ain't cheap either. That's the way we look at it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I think what we spent to go to the Royal one year, I think we spent almost three, almost two grand in meat. Oh yeah, yeah, easy, and and that's about what we spend on an MBN usually. Uh, you oh, know, you only two. May, may, uh, you know, depending on if we do all three, it's uh, you know somewhere in that ballpark too. If you use the good high quality stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was I was going to ask you uh, other than like maybe not, not turning in on time. Is there anything that, that you guys are looking for specifically that is like, no, mm -mm, that that's not okay. going <laughs> That's your department. Yeah, that's that, not that, going is the, that is the least fun part of my job. Um, yeah. So like I said, the, the, the key component for us is that everything must be cooked whole, right? Mm -hmm. um, that, so you can't take the money muscles off of your shoulders and wrap them up nice and pretty and then slice them. They have to stay attached. So mm. if we see a money muscle that's got bark all the way around it, you get to visit from me. Uh, yep. You have to show me where it came from and how that happened. And, 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 and then loin on whole hogs, um, you know, things like that. We, we just look for things like that where, where you we can tell that you separated parts and during the cooking, during right. the cooking process, which is against our rules. Yeah. Um, what, if, what if it was just a special hog that just had <laughs> it was just separated already? I and couldn't believe the stories we've heard. I, I've, I've, I've heard all kinds of things. I have one guy, he's like, hey, just show me where it came from, prove it to me. And he goes, Well, right there, right there. And I said, Okay, let's line it up. Sure enough, it fits. So, okay, we're good. Puzzle match. Um, but, you know, I, we try not to like pick people's stuff apart. It's only if it's obvious or if someone calls me and says, Hey, this dude's cheating. Uh, which, by the way, if you know barbecue cooks, no one ever does that. I beg them all the time. They say so and so's cheating, so and so's cheating. Oh, that guy's cheating inside that trailer. Blah blah blah. I said, well, well, call me when you see it, and I'll come check it out. If they're cheating, we'll throw them out of here. It's fine. I don't have any problem doing that. Right? I never get any phone calls. Nope. <laughs> no, I'm sure you got a call. Nobody hardly ever emails me. You got a call last year. I, it, one out of ten years. I mean, the, the point is, is nobody ever really calls. So. You know, if no one reports anything, it's hard for us to go find it. We look in the blind boxes if we see stuff that's obvious. Um, we'll have a conversation. That's where we go have conversations. Hmm. Uh, the only other thing we ever really catch is like on our ancillaries, like uh, we don't allow edible garnish in the box. Inedible. Inedible. 
only edible garnish, no inedibles. So if you leave a toothpick or a skewer or something like that, uh, you know, we find that we have to disqualify you for that. Kind and of that's stuff. for safety of our judges. We did have one of our judges get impaled by a toothpick one year. That was not fun. Yeah. Yeesh. Yeah. There was a toothpick hidden inside a shrimp yeah. and she couldn't see it. So when she bit into it, it stabbed the roof of her mouth and started bleeding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. at, at the table. That was fun. Yeah. We had to, we had to get her off the table and I had to go explain to the guy why he got disqualified. And I just showed him a little picture with the toothpick and said, here you go. Is that yours? He said, yeah. So you see the toothpick? He goes, oh God. <laughs> oh. It, 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 you know, like I said, I'd, I'd never want to have that conversation with anybody. We, we tell them all the time, like we're the most team centric judging yeah. people you can have, because that's all we do. I tell everybody all the time, Memphis and May is the only contest that I can't cook and I won't cook because we can't. Um, so I always go with the cooks. I, I try to make sure that if, if anything benefits anyone, it benefits the cooks. Mm -hmm. Um, I give them the benefit of the doubt, probably sometimes more than I should. Or, and, but, you know, look, uh, it's all about having a good time and, and trying to be fair. Uh, if we see something completely out of the ordinary, we'll obviously address it. But it's not a very common thing. Mm -mm. Now, do, do you guys, uh, is there any tagging of um, meats there? Or is it no. just? No, we, no, we don't do like they do in Houston. I, I, I came down there a couple of years ago and got to experience that with a the operation barbecue relief team and mm -hmm. uh they they wanted me to see how that worked because of what i do at memphis in may uh and i would be interested to do something like that for us it's just um training people to manage it properly yeah, right now uh, it, it, as always uh, houston has one of the greatest volunteer pools that i've ever seen put together that event particularly they do a really great job, top to bottom. Um, yeah, and they I have a great volunteer anything, program but, uh, in Memphis. I do volunteer for the Houston Last Talk Show and Rodeo uh, hey, the don't, barbecue competition. Don't get him so. started, good lord! Yeah. No, hey, no, seriously. I, I saw the pride yeah, on his face when no, he started tooting no, the horn. <laughs> hey, look, there it is. As someone who does this and who puts on large scale events like Memphis and May, I was seriously impressed by what they did down there. It, it is a very top notch run event, top to bottom. Everything I saw was great. Um, there's a lot of things that they do similar to us, and there's a lot of things they do different than us just because they can. We're not right laid it out in the same type fashion that they are at all. Uh, you know, it takes uh, a lot of volunteers, a lot. It does, oh, yeah. and we have a great volunteer program. I am not disparaging our volunteer program at all. We have a huge volunteer program. Yeah. We have uh, what five or six hundred at least for, for the whole month. For the whole month, I mean, we have a huge volunteer program for the size event that we put on uh and we've been involved with it for many years now we've got a great team that works with us uh we could not do it without them uh it's not just me and her in this t in the tent <laughs> we have uh, uh you know we've built a base of about 15 returning volunteers have been with us for at least the last six or seven years yeah so it's gotten a lot easier for us that we don't have to train new people every year they just have their assigned roles i know what they do every year we've come in on autopilot and it's gotten a lot more you know easier for us so it's been good so is this a competition that you have to win to get in? How, how do you get to compete in this? It used this to be a while back. I think before 2007, it used to yeah. be a one where you had to win it to get it. It used to be sanctioned and they would go all over the country. Um, I think uh, Memphis and May got out of that at a certain point because they wanted to focus on more other things. Um, so right now it's just a first come first serve who pits their application in kind of thing. So pretty much anybody in Texas that wanted to come out and cook, that's when the applications go out and fill it out, put it in. Um, I know there are some teams that, that are in Texas or, or team members of other teams that actually come and help some teams in Memphis. For example, Joey Machado comes down and um, Rob Ochoa comes out. And yeah. I'm sure there's a few other ones I can't think oh, of on top of my head. Yeah, there's guys from all over the place. There's there's people from San Antonio, Houston, floating around. They'll they'll come join one of the teams that are here locally, just so one they don't have as much of expense, but they still get to experience the whole you know Memphis and May experience there as well. So definitely anybody that doesn't want to, to for the first year coming out to it, definitely encourage them to, to reach out and say, Hey, I'd like to come out and join, you know, piggyback on a team there. These teams are always looking for help because they're doing such big scale catering events too, that they want a little help with to help the catering events are to help afford, you know, all this meat in this space and all that good stuff. So there's a lot of entertaining going on. Um, Thursday, Friday are our bigger party nights. So we have two big party nights and then Saturday is pretty much dead silent, all business. You know, that's our big, big money day. Okay. Um, 
so for your for your judges, do they, are they have to be like certified or anything like that? Or are they? Uh, yeah, we uh, we host a training class uh, at once a year. We we were doing it in the fall. We moved it to the spring this year. I'd like to keep uh, it there. I'd like to keep it there too. We certify roughly around a hundred judges a year. Um, all of our judges that um, that you see on site at Memphis MA or have been at least through the class. Um, most of our judges have been there. I say on average. Uh, well, most of our judges are at least five to 10 years experience. Uh, we have some that are a lot more than We have that. some that are a lot more. We have some that have been uh, judging barbecue since the 80s. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, which, and, and that's, and they've, they, they've been here since we've started, you know. Yeah, and they come from all over. We get judges yeah. from Germany, England, uh, Australia. Yeah, oh, yeah. We, we have tons of international judges. We uh, Last year, I think we pulled judges from probably 20 states uh four or five foreign countries last year alone mm -hmm. um and that that changes year to year you know obviously just depending, just, on, just like, depending. like covid hurt it a while for internationals to yeah. come for a few years i think we're just now getting a lot of the internationals back yeah finally um and then you know we've had i mean i'm trying to think like we've had people from all over the place oh, I, yeah. it, it's it's no it's never a dull moment in the judging town uh yeah but the, the, even our guys that come from all over, we've got one guy that's been coming from England for like the last 10 years. I see him every year. He comes over. And, uh, yeah, uh, with two guys. I got one guy from uh, Germany, one guy from England. They come over every year. They, they love it. Um, they keep that's coming cool. back. They're great judges. I mean, they the really are. Too. So, our, so our ancillary categories actually run on Thursday and Friday because we have so many. So there's five, five one day and four Five on Thursday <laughs> and four on Friday. And then you have the pork categories on Saturday. Wow. So, so wow. Thursday is the sauces, which is tomato sauce, mustard sauce, vinegar sauce. Then we have hot wings, and then we have turkey. Yeah. And then Friday is beef, seafood, poultry, and exotic. And then obviously Saturday's whole hog, whole shoulder, rib. And then we brought back patio this year finally. So yeah. patio's back. Then our patio. Which is our backyard. It's our backyard type division. They, okay. they only cook ribs. Uh, the only difference for our patio division is they don't do on-site judging for the preliminary round, okay. only for the finals. So they just turn in a blind box. We take the top three blind boxes, and then they get to do an on-site presentation for uh, 15 minutes maximum. And the winner of that category is no longer allowed to stay in patio. Yeah. They have to move up to ribs next. Yeah, yeah. if you win, you move up. You're, you're so no... we have teams that will throw That's it cool. on purpose every year. Yeah. Like, you got to tell them that story. That was funny. Oh, yeah, that is. That's one of the greatest presentations I've ever seen because, you know, you hear all kinds of stuff. People tell all kinds of stories. But uh, this this team, they've been in our patio division for Years. as long as I can remember. Uh, and they keep finaling because they're pretty dang good cooks, but they don't want to win because they don't want to be forced to move up. <laughs> so this year they finaled and uh, the guy went behind the thing and he put probably an entire handful of like Morton's sea salt like all over the top of the ribs right before he brought them out, mm. sets them out on the table. He steps out from behind the back of the uh, trailer, pop opens a beer and slams the entire beer right in front of the judges and then just lets out this huge burp. He's like, hey, I'm what's his name? Head cook and uh, lead tour bus driver here at the, whatever team they were, you know. <laughs> and he goes on and on. He tells this whole story. He's like, you guys want a shot? How about a bourbon? You know, this and that and the other. Here's some ribs. Here's some ribs. Just eat up. Tell me what you think. And then he just throws the whole thing on purpose oh to God. not win. <laughs> It was the greatest presentation I've ever seen. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen you try to hold in a laugh for so long. Oh, I did. Yeah, quiet. I, I can't say anything, and like you know, I, I can't interfere. So I'm I'm holding back. Like I'm, I'm over there in the corner, like you know, dying, <laughs> and be like telling all the people I needed signs that's like hush, you know, like, like they hold up at a golf course. You know, I need I need some of those for everybody because everybody's like trying to hold in. I'm like, y'all shut up, please let them finish. It, it took everything I had. It was the greatest. Did we give them second or third? I think they got second that year. So the third place must have really been bad. But. <laughs> oh man, uh, do you do you have a favorite category that you like to judge? Me? Yeah, but I it, like to judge hog because I like bacon. Yeah, yeah. That that is the ben the benefit of judging whole hog is typically the teams give you some bacon when you get done. I like yeah. loin too. I like loin and bacon are my favorite parts of the whole hog. But yeah, I like judging whole hog because you do get a diverse section of meats versus just one or the other. That's just me. 
I, I like cooking shoulder, so that's probably my favorite one to to judge, I guess. But whole hog has always been one of my favorites too. Uh, like I said, the thing about hog is you've got three parts. You have to turn in all three parts. You got to do the ham, shoulder, and the loin. Perfectly. And, and they've all got to be perfect, mm -hmm. and they all got to be done together. Um, and you can't take them off the pig. You can't take them off the pig and separate them, and you can't right. cook extra stuff. So it, it's really interesting uh, to see it when it's done perfectly. And there are some really great techniques, whole, <laughs> techniques and uh, some really great whole hog cooks. I, yeah. th there's uh, almost everyone who's ever, you know, won Memphis and May with a hog. They do stuff that uh, will blow your mind when it comes to that. Mm. Yeah, I can't the, te I can't the technique is crazy. I need to be a fly on a wall on that one. Right, right yeah. The whole hog, like we, we just don't do that very much down here. But even just trying to keep the point and the flat on our brisket to finish around the same time is tough enough for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. it's it's not it's not easy, man. That the the hog cook is uh, is definitely a difficult cook. Of course, I wouldn't say that anybody at Memphis and May's really got an advantage in any category because it's just as hard to hold a tiny little slab of ribs that's cut down for competition <laughs> cooking uh you know for, especially if there's for, a weather delay especially if there's a delay or something because you know we are rain or shine but if it's a tornado we have to stop uh we, we've had we've had evacuated the park we've had to times. evacuate the park a couple of times during judging you know we had lightning strike like on site uh was it when we were tiger lane a couple mm -hmm. of years ago mm -hmm. uh we've had to evacuate several times was that 22 yeah, 22. I think that was our last evacuation was in 22. And that was during turn -ins. It was Luckily, it was on uh, Friday, so it was during our ancillaries. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if yep. if we told you it was due at 1045 and, and next thing you know, it's four and you got to turn in. <laughs> you got to learn either how to punt, reboot, or adjust. Yeah. So mm. it's, uh, Hey, that's the, that's the those curveballs we were talking about. You get you get you got to adapt and overcome, right? That's that's the whole thing. That's a big one, though. When you're at Memphis. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, and that's where we try to make sure, as the organizers, that if we do have a delay, we try to make sure that we give the cooks plenty of time to like punt and reboot, or uh, adjust, yeah. or, or adjust. You know, I think that day we did it was like seafood and uh, exotic hadn't been turned in yet. Uh, so, you know, we, we decided, Hey, when, when we knew we got the all clear, we could let everybody back in the park. I said, we, we've got to give these guys at least two or three hours to, so they can start over. Uh, so some of them had to go back to the store. And some of them had to go back to the store, like during mm -hmm. the storm and get more stuff, you know, uh, <laughs> like you said, it's all that uh, adapting and overcoming it. The, the yeah. barbecue is not a fair weather sport. <laughs> I remember one year we were on the river and they evacuated. There were people at the gate when they were starting them back in with like fresh chicken, just ready to go in, like oh, yeah. start over with chicken. Wow. Yeah. That is crazy. So you mentioned Tiger Lang. You guys have, uh, you guys, Memphis and May has changed locations a couple of times in the mm -hmm. last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, I've sort of been following along with this. I don't totally get all of it that's going on. I don't know if you guys can talk about that at all. I, well, I mean, we can talk about it a little bit. Uh, I don't think anyone knows fully what is going well, on. Well, we were at Tiger Lang two years ago in 22 because yeah. they were renovating the park yeah. at Tommy so, Park. The, I'll give you the quick synopsis version. So, Tom Lee Park downtown uh, was the historic home for Memphis in May uh, since the early. late late '80s, early '90s. You know, since I was a you know pretty young kid. Um, after that, uh, you know, we we only had one year that we weren't there. It was in 2011. The park actually flooded. The Mississippi River came over the banks and uh, completely flooded the park out. We had to move the event. Um, side of that, uh, a few years ago, I guess it was, it was 22 because of renovation. Well, I know like 21, 2021, they started tossing the idea around that they were going to redo Tom Lee Park. Um, make it more tourist make friendly, it more tourist friendly mm -hmm. make it more user friendly, what, what, whatever the shtick was with it. Um, so we knew that we were going to be moved out of the park while it was under mm -hmm. renovation, which was the initial year in 22. Uh, cause they, they had to complete the stuff and there was no way they could get it done within the, you know, the one year time frame. That, that, that's understandable for a, a huge construction project like that. Uh, so we knew we were going to be out that year. Um, the following year we made the return to the new unfinished, unfinished or partially finished Tom Lee Park, uh, which when, when it got done, we realized that maximum at our layout, the way we had been doing barbecue for the way we had been doing it. Uh, we could only fit 150 teams max on the new park. Before we were like 230. Before, yeah, before we were 230 to 240. Uh, you know, that, I think our largest was like 247, 248 yeah. a few years ago. 
Um, so we were consistently over 200. And then after they redid the park, we realized there was no way that we could go back into it uh, with any more than 150. Mm -hmm. Last year, we had the event and the weather was uh, not, nice. Uh, not nice to us yeah. uh, from the weeks leading up to the event all the way through our load in and by the end of the week it was fairly nice the weather itself was good but the park was uh you imagine heavy equipment on freshly laid sod yeah he yeah mm -hmm. heavy equipment yeah. freshly laid sod freshly this uh so they uh the people who manage the park which is not the city of memphis it's it's its own separate entity memphis river parks partnership um handed memphis and may a one million dollar 1.4 million dollar damage bill for our use of the uh, park last year. Yeah, uh, that's still ongoing litigation. I cannot comment any further. You don't know anything. About I don't know right. anything about it anyway. <laughs> uh, well above my pay grade. I'm just a volunteer. Yeah, uh, yeah. but I, I'm just make that clear so they don't come after so, me for this interview. Right. Yeah, Memphis and May decided it was not viable to stay down there. One because the reduction of teams, and and two because that was going to be an ongoing problem year over year. That you know, that obviously nobody can really afford that kind of damage bill, and you can't pass that on to the teams. That's already expensive enough to be there. So. Um, right now they've opted to move back to Tiger Lane for right now until they can see if this is the permanent home or if this, there's another more viable yeah. permanent home going there, forward. Uh, Memphis and May is still exploring other options, but at, at, at the way our city is currently set up, Tiger Lane is probably the best place for it to do, for us to do an event like that. Logistically, it's center city. Uh, it's, it's in the center of the city. It's easy to get trailers in and out of. It's uh, on asphalt. It's on asphalt, so we don't have to worry about mud and and tearing the park up or anything like that. We actually have physical buildings we can run judging yeah, and stuff we, out yeah, of we're, tents. Yeah, we're in a building with real power instead of a generator and a tent, you know. So it, it has its uh, it has its benefits. And, of course, you know, it does have its downside. We're not on the river. And the, view and, and the view's great down there. And, and if you've ever stood along the mighty Mississippi, it's pretty cool. Um, but we're there to crown a world champion and have a real barbecue contest with as many teams as we can fit in there. And we couldn't fit more than 150 and yeah, you know, I, I think we're at a good spot. Um, I, I think uh, going forward, I, I don't see any reason why we can't come back like we were. Uh, you know, I, I will say that I've noticed as a whole, I think a lot of attendance is down at barbecue events across the country. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, inflation. I, I think it's just, you know, the climate of everything that's going on and or maybe just burnout because there are so many contests. I think it's a lot of attrition. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm noticing it. Like, we used to go to state contests a few years ago. Every one we went to, there were 75 teams at it. Now we go, right. there's maybe 30, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, barbecue. Barbecue's the same way around yeah. here. You know, we were at 60, 70 team contest, and now, you know, a, a good contest. The one we're doing this weekend's at 60. It, it stays at, it stays, ours that we do in Arlington's about stays the same as that, as a token does. Yeah. We average about 60 teams. Um, but a lot of the ones I'm seeing, they're, 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 they're I got, I've seen a KCBS contest that's coming up soon. They're begging for teams. Yeah. Beg, like, he's emailing like twice a week begging for teams. Yeah. Oh, well, like I said, I just think that's some, um, thing that's going on generally across the board but I, I think we're in good shape going forward i like where we're at at tiger lane i enjoy it i know the teams enjoy loading in and out on concrete much better than they do uh, <laughs> well they don't have to pay for sca flooring yeah they don't have to pay for flooring we don't have to have scaffolding set up uh you know it's it's, it's a little different so that's okay. kind of the gist of it there's a lot more <laughs> in-depth stuff that has been going on in fighting for a while <laughs> Yeah, we were hoping you'd spill the tea and just uh, tell us all the drama that uh, we're going to be oh, well, well, correct. Well, so a lot of that drama is between team members who got overly passionate about the, the smoke slam being down there. Um, mm -hmm. From our point of view, you know, I wish that contest well. I mean, you know, I yeah. hate that they picked that same weekend because if they picked a different one, we go cook it. Yeah. Um, right. Shoot, that's a good pot of money I'd like to chase after, but I'm obviously obligated to be where, where we're at. Um, you know, we looked at the numbers that they got. We looked at the numbers we got. If if they weren't having their event and all those teams came to ours, we're we still, still wouldn't be where we were at. So there's definitely numbers down all over no matter what. Um, I know the biggest concern I'm hearing, and I've heard, I've talked to people just, you know, in passing at stores or whatnot, is the concern that, that the other contest is not going to be able to get enough judges. Because their format that they went with is the exact same format we have, which is not traditional Memphis Barbecue Network format. It's their old way, not the current way. Um, mm -hmm. And that does cause an issue because when you do on-site prelim and on-site finals, 
and blind, it does require a significant amount more judges than if you were just do blind only. Yeah. So from our point of view, we're fine on our judges. We've reached our, what we need in our capacity. We actually have a wait list right now. Um, but from what I understand is that the other contest is, is still looking for some more judges that are certified and trained. Um, I know. Well, uh, I know they're looking world, for world food judges well, too, they, well, because well, they're, yeah. cause the ancillaries that they're doing downtown are through world food. Yeah. Um, they got some golden tickets there for the world food championships and yeah. they, re they require them to be eat method certified. Um, in the Memphis area, I don't think there's that many eat method certified judges and I don't know how many are traveling from out of town to do that. So I think they're trying to, to rally up some. I know the Memphis Barbecue Network is also hosting a lot of new judging classes here lately just to help beef up their judge pool to see if they can get some more judges, you know, signed up for their event as well. And I hope they get it for the team's sake because there's a lot of our friends that are well, checking down yeah, there. Right. And I don't want to see them get screwed over, um, you know, because there's not the right kind of judging going on. But not that the, the reps wouldn't do a good job, but that there's not the right certified judges there present or if meat has to hold while they go from one table to the other or whatnot. Right. I don't know how they're going to manage that. And I, I hope they are able to figure it out. Well, we, you know, like I said, we know pretty much everyone that's putting the contest on. We've been yeah. friends with them for years. Some know? of them trained us. Some of them, yeah, we've worked. Uh, yeah, the girls, uh, several of the girls that are putting it on were the ones that trained us to do what we do. Um, so, you know, we're, we're friends with these people. We wish them, uh, you know, a, a good event. Uh, I have no ill will towards the actual people that are putting the event, like like the people who are doing the contest. Correct. Um, I got, you know, the, the people that picked the date, we were kind of, when they came a, out with a WTF. Right. And, that, that's and, a different story. You know, I, I, I right. think it's in, like I think it's in poor taste right. and we'll just say that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think I'm on the same page there, but I love that it's all, it's all good. It's all barbecue family, all love. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, awesome. Look, I mean, what, what good does it do me to wish them ill will? And like I said, I mean, I've got, right. you know, hundreds of friends that are down there cooking and, and cooking in various capacities. We've got friends that are doing demos down there. We've got friends that are cooking in the Junior Barbecue League contest mm -hmm. down there. We've got friends that are, you know, running the judging. We've got friends that are doing, you know, doing everything down there. We, we know somebody who's done pretty much everything that you can imagine. So we want it to go well for them. I mean, it, it looks bad on our city if it doesn't go well. Right. Um, and, you know, that's what got me into doing, working for Memphis in May. I, you know, I, I'm proud to be from Memphis. Uh, I, I like my city. I, you know, I try to represent it well, and, and that's what it's about to us. And, you know, I wish them the best down there. Uh, <laughs> good luck. We had a right. lot of fun down there in that park last year. I hope uh, they do too. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious to see how their load in, load out goes, and all yeah. the other stuff because uh, I just know how what a nightmare it was. I was going to say, year. logistically, that park was a nightmare. It wasn't easy to load in and out of before they redesigned it. Uh, yeah. Last year was the it, worst. The worst, and mm. you know, I wish them all the best. No, I, I love that. Yeah, I'm always kind of the jokester uh, and thinking about like, man, dude, I, can I just imagine just like a, a anchorman style uh, meetup uh, where the, the <laughs> York Man and Memphis and May just like uh, meet up in, in a centralized back alley. Yes, everybody's got their whole hogs and just chunking uh, meats at each other and just like throwing tenderloins. Tenderloins. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it. And it. It would be for a great time for sure. It'd but be a great uh, cross wrestling event. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Uh, well, hey, Michelle, Brandon, we appreciate y'all giving us time. We, I know we took more time than I said we were going to, but uh, I love having y'all. Yeah, it's been awesome have, talking with you guys. Do this again oh, for no sure. Time. Oh, absolutely, anytime. Yeah, we enjoy. Anybody it. Wants to, uh, wants to find you guys on the social medias or if you have websites or anything like that? Where, where oh, do they go? Uh, ain't it the life? Is it, no, on Facebook, it's just ain't it the life. Yeah, and then ain't it the life BBQ on Instagram, Instagram. and then ain't it the life .com is our website to our it's our link to our catering stuff where we do uh our daily stuff yeah. or perfect, our perfect. personal socials that are, are our names all right and i'll put up I'll some it. some links down below uh john's gonna have it like yeah down just somewhere just, so my son here. knows what that means yeah. he's like comment yeah. follow follow comment. Links. yeah yeah, yeah. So definitely hit the like button scroll down yeah like do all follow, share, right? <laughs> exactly exactly do Love all those things and hey, we appreciate y'all y'all have a great yeah, night thank you guys absolutely right, thank enjoy you guys. it guys thanks thank you. They're great and i love that it was not like I was, I was i was waiting to ask those kind of questions at the end i wanted to ask about smoke slam and i was like oh, should i ask and then i ask yeah, i don't want to poke never a bear really, i never really wanted to get into that because i mean i'm I sure really they wanna... probably filled a lot of those questions and yeah. uh, leading up to the to the point in time that they i mean we're we're they're right around the corner from the big competition mm -hmm. and this has been going on for like year plus 
And so I'm sure every show or every yeah, yeah, every yeah. event or whatever they've gone to, they had to field these type of questions or whatever. So we weren't trying to get uh, all up into the business. Too but, much hey, drama. We so, get a little get a little, get a little uh, information out there to the yes, people. That was for the people. Mm-hmm. For Brandon and Michelle, sorry we had to ask, but that's for the people, right? Uh, I think we're we're just about done here, right? Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you just a really quick hypothetical, mm, and uh, I don't know what teams are cooking at what event, mm-hmm. but if we had a, let me just throw it out there, a mm-hmm. Malcolm Reed mm-hmm. going up against Heath Riles. Mm. Are we doing Anchorman? Is that what we're doing right yes. now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I feel like you need a couple more because there's usually like four different teams, isn't there? Okay. Let me let me just uh, let me think about this here for a second here. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you got a, a Myron Mixon team maybe in there? Definitely Myron Mixon team. The Mixons with like this long hair just like flowing back. You know what I mean? <laughs> the Mixon boys? Yeah, the Georgia, oh, yeah. Georgia, Georgia peaches. Like, mm, come on now. I love it. I um, love it. Who else do you have out there? I feel like you have to like, have a Texas team. You have to have a Texas 100%, team. 100% Texas yeah. team. Uh, who are we throwing out there for Texas? Uh, you, you got you got Bill Purvis. Bill Purvis, Chicken Prime. Yeah, you got the Aaron Leslie. These are some big boys. Aaron Leslie. These guys. Yeah. Uh, are these guys are they, are they ganging together? So oh, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. Team Bill Texas. Purvis, yeah. Uh, Aaron Leslie, Fred Robles. Oh, yeah. um, they're done. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Team um, Mixon, Team Reed, and Team Riles. I love y'all. I love all y'all. But uh, Team Texas, come. We're going to slap you with the brisket. I'd like to see uh, – uh, look, hey, no, nobody stole my idea. I mean, but I'd like to see that competition. Why did I just picture someone getting stabbed with like a T-bone? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, let me just clean this meat off real quick. <laughs> We're not going to waste this. Uh, Let's go. Uh, awesome interview uh, with uh, Michelle and Brandon. Uh, super knowledgeable people when it comes to the, the, the cooking, judging um, – it, it, it's a, um, a certainly, uh, a, I'm gonna say asset. It, it's certainly nice to have somebody that uh, of that caliber to be able to pick their brains and and learn a little bit about because I'm sure they've forgotten more than what we've actually learned right, about right, doing right. barbecue. So it, honestly, it is a pleasure to be able to talk barbecue with them. Peace. Thanks, everybody. We've been great. As we close out, big thanks to SmokerBuilder.com and the MBBQA for their unwavering support. Absolutely. And cheers to Barbecue News Magazine, Suckle Busters, and Dow Strong Knives for their contributions. And you know Yeti always has our back, and Cooley Nation ensures our drinks stay perfectly cold. Lastly, props to Cambro Manufacturing and, of course, a spicy nut to Chicks of Smoke Seasoning. Thanks to all for powering this show. Until next time, keep smoking. <laughs>